Hello, everybody. I believe we're live. I am here today with my two good friends, Seth Leif Prusansky, author of Fight to Enlight. He does a meditation every two, oh, every Tuesday of every week. And Raquel Spring, who is a fourth generational astrologer and does amazing sessions and presentations. And it's just awesome to be here with both of you as we are right on the verge of the new moon coming up on Sunday. How are you guys? Great. Doing wonderful. Great. Yeah. Definitely feeling the new moon energies coming up. <laughs> right? Yeah. Yeah. And and I know you usually have uh, something we can refer to. I don't know if you do today, but we could um, put that on the screen. I'll make you a co-host. Yes, I the do. Tell always has great information to share. <laughs> really well organized too, so. <laughs> well, thank you. Let me, so let me just get the, the new moon chart up here, but. I was actually looking ahead at the full moon in two weeks from now. So, so let's go back to the new moon. Um, you know, so the new moons, as I always say, I love the new moon energies because they are really the energies for the month ahead. So when we're looking at a new moon, we really are looking at the overall tone for the month ahead. So we have a new moon happening on August 4th or August 5th, depending on where you're at in the world. And uh, this new moon is in Leo. Okay. So it's not exact here right now, just because I want to have the exact full moon chart that I'm going to show later. But this, this new moon over here is happening at 12 degrees of Leo. Okay. So I just recommend everybody that wants to take a look at their chart and, and see where Leo is in for you. Actually, as a matter of fact, Leo has been receiving a lot of energies these last few weeks because we've had uh, Mercury in Leo, Venus in Leo, and Venus and Mercury that were just in Leo, they also conjuncted Vesta in Leo. Now, Vesta is an asteroid that speaks of where we feel deep devotion and deep commitment to something. So our Leo house, your Leo house, has been filled with very powerful activations of a deeper sense of commitment, a renewal of commitment that is coming in. This is about the true voice of your heart, the, the, the true voice of your soul that is calling you forward. So Vesta in Leo has been calling all of us to get in touch with our deep commitment during this time. So Mercury comes along, Venus comes along and ignites, it reignites that sense of devotion and commitment. And now the new moon happens in Leo. So this is an official burst of energy to all of our Leo houses. Um, and the thing I love about this Leo new moon is that it is in a trine with Aries, which is where the North Node is at, and in a sextile with Gemini, which is where Mars and Jupiter are at. Now, the trine and the sextile are the easier aspects, okay? Because there, there isn't a lot of pushing with these energies. They flow in a much easier way. So this new moon ultimately is creating a very supportive flow of energy between Gemini and Aries. And this is what I most love about this new moon. We don't really see any harsh energies here pointing to the new moon per se. As a matter of fact, there are actually very supportive energies from Gemini and Aries. So I'm going to just leave it at this for now. I'm going to listen to a little bit of uh, if you have any insights, uh, Laura and Seth. And then I want to go a little deeper into the energies of the month of August, culminating in the full moon of August. That's awesome. Okay. Yeah, I was actually, as you're speaking, I'm wondering like what from now, from the new moon into the full moon in two weeks, like what? what do you think we're going to feel energetically as far as like going from the new moon to the full moon and all the different energies involved between that two week period from now to then? Oh yeah. Well, 
Yeah, we'll dive into that for sure. And Venus moving into Virgo, Mercury going retrograde not too long after the new moon. I think it's really just a time of going internal, not making big decisions. A lot of times for Mercury retrograde, if there's something already activated, it, it tends to be a time of wrapping it up, but not mm -hmm. really initiating new things. And with the new moon being all about seed planting, I think it's just like, how, how are we going to take care of the internal world and maybe look at the Leo energy of where we want more joy in our lives, more, more art recreation and fun and just like the talents and hobbies and skills that just bring us joy. And, and where are we letting the outer world maybe zap us of that? I think it's very significant that the Pluto square um, Chiron, I don't think it's a direct square right now, but it's at least showing up. Mm -hmm. um, I think a lot of people with Pluto in retrograde right now are internalizing a lot of pain um, and not knowing how to manage that when we're functioning in this sort of personality matrix that's shifting into higher earth energies that a lot of us are already residing in, you know, and when I say that, I don't mean like we're better than it, but it's like, we're not afraid to go deep. We're not afraid to be real or authentic or transparent. And I think that's really hard for people to break free from and seeing the madness of the world, seeing and experiencing a lot of divide and conquer, it's like, what do you do with that pain if if you're maybe going on pharmaceuticals or you're distracting it um, and, and trying to find, you know, a way to avoid it? It's it's going to catch up. And I think uh, there's a lot of people having unusual health issues um, and need for emotional release. And I feel like this new moon, Virgo going in or Venus going into Virgo in the retrograde is how can we best support our health and wellness um, and healing from all that, but in a vibration of like, fun, maybe yeah. taking care of the needs of more fun and joy and pleasure to offset the intensity of everything we're experiencing in the collective. What are your thoughts? Yeah, absolutely. Perfect. Especially with the sextile to Gemini and the trine to Aries and the North node, I would absolutely say that this is about finding your joy, your passion, getting in touch with creativity, which is Leo, your heart, um, and this is really about getting in touch with your authentic voice. You know, this is a time where we will see a lot of uh, the outside world is going to get very loud. And Seth was asking, what can we expect in the next couple of weeks? It's going to get very loud. That's what we can expect. And it's just the beginning. So this is why it's it's so important more than ever for us to really get in touch with our authentic voice because if we if we go by what's happening on the outside world it, it's going to get very uncomfortable um and it's it's happening for a reason to show us that the old is no longer working i mean if it was working it would be a very different scenario right so yeah. it's pretty obvious by now um what's happening and so to me this this month of august is very important because it is the beginning of this disruption to the system factor. And this whole month revolves around the square of Jupiter and Saturn. Mm. Now, this square is pivotal, okay? Because we will see the square play out in the throughout the next nine months or so i think the final the third and final square happens on june 15th i believe but this is the first one and it happens on august and it happens at the time of the full moon as well which we're going to see i'm going to show you the full moon in just a second so this entire month to me is about this square um, I've been calling the square shifts in society. As a matter of fact, it's uh, the name of my next workshop. I have every two weeks, I have workshop with my um, community. So the next workshop we're having actually tomorrow, Saturday, is called shifts in society. Now, this is just the beginning of a huge wave that has to do with the disruption of the system. Mm. It's important to remember whenever we see a square, especially by big planets like this, we have to take into consideration the starting point of that cycle. And the starting point of Jupiter and Saturn was at their conjunction at zero degrees Aquarius in 2021. Now, this was the historical 
star of Bethlehem, you know, a massive, what was it they were calling the great American conjunction? I mean, this was just such a power. America, no, the, the great conjunction, the great conjunction of 2021 was what set the marking stage for the new beginning of the world. Now, this conjunction happened at zero degrees Aquarius, ushering in Pluto in Aquarius, and obviously the whole influence of Aquarius that's coming into our reality right now. And Jupiter and Saturn here in 2021 marked the beginning of a new society. Mm. Now, that was just the beginning. So Jupiter and Saturn keep going, and now they face their first square since that conjunction, in other words, since the beginning of that cycle. So the square is when we see the moment of action, the first moment of action. So we are looking at the first moment of action of this new cycle for society. So this this square over here is symbolizing the rebellion. It's symbolizing the, the, the aspects of the government that don't work anymore. And remember, we're going to see this square play out for until June of next year. So we still have a long ways to go. And this is just the beginning. Mm. So this square... I'm going to show you two weeks later, we see the full moon happen. Now, this full moon is very interesting because this full moon happens at the exact square. Look at this, the exact square, the first square of Jupiter and Saturn, really highlighting the shifts in society, as I'm calling it. We're going to be seeing things play out in governments, in the world. Things are going to get very loud. At the same time, this full moon that happens in two weeks from now in Aquarius is also highlighting by T-square Uranus by, by degree and almost by minute as well. Look at this. The sun and moon are at 2715 and Uranus is at 2711. That is a very close T-square. And this is also happening while Mercury is retrograde in its inferior conjunction with the sun. All of this highlighting Uranus in the middle. So what does this mean? When, when we see a planet in the middle, what we call the T-square, that planet, in this case Uranus, becomes the focal point. And there is a very extreme energy there that needs to be released. It's put in the spotlight. Now, Uranus has already been in the spotlight over the last few weeks, especially when we go a month ago. Look at this. We see a month ago, we see this conjunction of Mars and Uranus and Taurus. This happened at the end of July. And we spoke about this conjunction on the last video that we did together. I definitely want to hear your insights on this, but we've been seeing the aftermath of this conjunction until today. This conjunction brought about many sudden events. Mm -hmm. Now, we also saw this at play with, for those that, that follow the U.S.'s uh, you know, news and the whole thing with Trump. I mean, this was such a classic Uranus and Mars conjunction. I've been calling this the, the Lord of Lightning and Thunder explosive, unexpected, all of a sudden. And we're still seeing the the wave, this wave, um, even weeks later. So this full moon is going to highlight the same energy of the sudden, the unexpected. It's still going. It's still going. I, I think we're going to be seeing some more um, things emerge on a, on a global front um, with the government as well. I don't follow the news, so I have no idea where we're at with everything. I just know what I hear people talking about. So, but I bet whatever whatever exploded over here, we're going to be seeing some new uh, insights and twists and turns to the story, especially as Mercury is retrograde and will highlight this, this uh, Uranus energy. Mm. But yeah, any thoughts? Fascinating. You know, what Laura was saying about illnesses and people getting sick you guys both know there's been a lot of that i've been seeing so many different people and it's like there's so many 
different afflictions or whatever. And it's like almost like nobody can even tell what it is, but it's happening to so many. It's wild. It's really yeah. the need for healing couldn't be greater in every way for our species on this planet, in this world. So, yeah, that Laura, what made you say that? Because that really like. Oh, yeah. Well, right now, Pluto opposite the moon square Chiron. I just really feel that it's unusual because or, or it takes people kind of by surprise because I, I really feel like people are really used to pushing things down mm. and not realizing how much of a healing needs to take place on a collective level. So Pluto being retrograde, it being an outer planet, it's kind of like there's going to be a lot of casualties. There's a big breaking point. And that breaking point is, can you let go? Can you face the path of healing in order to move to the next level? Or, or are you going to bury it? Are you going to distract yourself away from it? Are you going to medicate it with like farmies or even addiction tendencies? And, you know, and we got to be real careful that it doesn't catch up with us because we're, we're, we're kind of, you know, at a critical point. And I love what you shared about, you know, what's to come and everything in the Saturn square, and the Mars, uh, yeah, Jupiter now, you know, after the Uranus, it just really feels like Saturn square is trying to control um, communications or the way we perceive things. And then the Mars Uranus, when we look at it the week of the uh, assassination attempt, whatever people feel mm -hmm. about it, mm -hmm. it just seems to be a catalyst. Um, and with Neptune and Pisces, Neptune about to move into Aries and the North Node moving into Pisces, I really feel like we're going to have to determine um, how we're perceiving things versus what's real and what isn't real, because that's going to get us, I think, in a major energy drain until it becomes real obvious and clear. Um, it's best to maybe go inward. And like we're talking about with the month ahead, what what can we do to offset all of this? So there is a release valve, like you said, with the T-square, there's going to be a lot of pressure. And I feel, um, yeah, it's just like, also the Mars Uranus, the eccentricity of like the transgenderism it's like the shadow of uranus in a lot of ways is the shock of what's appearing to us on the world stage we had the assassination attempt but also the uh the um opening ceremony to the olympics how there's that saturn square with the pisces and then the you know the gemini um trying to control uh what we're able to sort of be exposed to versus what's being censored. And, and like you were saying, the final throes of the, uh, the system that's shifting, but it's holding on uh, for dear life and expressing itself through, um, I, I don't want to say lower octaves, like it's lower. But, mm -hmm. um, <laughs> I think it's creating a lot of shock in the sense that this is the inversion of like religion. And so the Saturn square with the, yeah. but I think it's shaking up a lot of people taking things so seriously that it's maybe helping with some lev levity, but it's still really disturbing. And I think a lot of these shocks um, are, you know, really pulling up people's morality, whether it's through the filter of religion or just the way you feel about it. You know, when you see children being pranced around with somebody whose balls are hanging out, you know, that's a mm. pretty legitimate. Oh. Um, but on top of the eccentricity of, you know, because Uranus rules like the unusual, right? So it's a time of awakening, but we're being pulled into all these shocking events. Can we fall back on ourselves during this month of going inward with the Mercury retrograde and the energies of like healing and being meticulous about what our needs are um, to, to particularly like purify um, where that Pluto square to Chiron is uh, at the detriment of our health if we don't. And, and we don't have to fully understand it. We just need to be able to release or at least align with something that we feel good about that is supporting us. Because I think people tend to go along with the trend or this is what we're seeing on the world stage. And yes, yeah, divide and conquer. But what is the status quo right now? It's like wokeism is way more in our face than not. Um, and I think people are taking a second look at all that instead of just following the latest you know, trends of what seems to be progressive. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to mention that. I don't know if that even came out right. Yeah, yeah, no, that's great. I think that's what the whole point of, you know, what's happening in the world right now is all about. It's to show us that we need to find a new solution. And this solution needs to come from within. We need to figure out where our uh, baseline is at for joy, for stability, for health. And no one's going to do that for us. It's obvious. It's obvious the world and the government don't have 
our best interest in mind. So it's happening for a reason, you know, it's happening so that we can be self-sufficient and we can take the, the reins of our life and really start to direct our path, be held accountable and responsible for the choices and the decisions that we make and the consequences that are manifesting in our lives. So yeah, health is everything. Virgo is is the sign of health. Um, and so we do see with Venus and Mercury um, in Virgo and, and Mercury stations retrograde in Virgo. So it really is this, this connection with our joy, our passion, our creativity, and our health. Without our health, we don't have any of that. And so this is where we really need to start asking ourselves big questions about where we live, what are we exchanging our time for? How much of that? Is it healthy? Is it the best for us? Does it serve our higher purpose? You know, is it bringing us joy? Where do we live? What is our lifestyle, our habits? I mean, these are all big questions that Virgo loves to ask because mm. Virgo is all about wellness and, and health and well-being. So I think this Mercury retrograde is a excellent time for us to go within and ask ask ourselves the ourselves these big questions um and then as it retrogrades back into leo we see the you know this this dynamic get emphasized with our passion our creativity what is our passion what is our creativity are we living that no why not what are the next steps that you need to take in order to get closer to that so really understanding that the world is not going to come and do the work for us. The government is not. The president is not. We are responsible for ourselves and for our rhythms, for our joy, for our well-being. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> yeah, it's just so intense. Um, it's totally wild. And I really I hope this is a huge catalyst for, you know, people to not be afraid of looking at their wounds and the wounds of the world. And yeah, squares tend to be not being able to let go, but we almost have to let go, not as in dismissing it or just releasing it. It's like letting go of holding on to it so it can fully surface or else that internalization can definitely create a lot of physical issues. Yeah. You know, the, uh, the full moon where we see this um, T square, wait, where is it? The T square with the sun and the moon and, and Mercury retrograde here is pretty yeah. incredible highlighting Uranus. Um, this is going to be a pivotal moment for, for Uranus. You know, I feel like anything that we have been just kind of a uh, hot, trying to hide underneath the rug or try to, um, you know, not address clearly is going to come out, especially with this Mercury retrograde. I think this Mercury retrograde is going to bring a few surprises. It's going to bring a few twists and turns to the story. So I would definitely be very mindful if there's anything in your life that you know you need to perhaps have an honest conversation with someone um, or address a certain issue, this is the time to do it. Because if you don't, with Uranus over here, the situation may just automatically randomly explode. And it yeah. may come as a form of a shock, shocking news, um, something quote unquote unpredictable. Now we most likely will see this on a, on a global level, um, maybe some interesting twists and turns to the story right around the time of the full moon. But, you know, on a personal level, I really, I feel like we've had ample time in these last couple months. We've had ample time to make a certain adjustments. You know, Uranus in focus for us all has really been pushing us to change and make adjustments. Um, and we've had ample time to address themes, speak to the people that we need to, and if there's anything that we have not addressed, it may very well come out during this time of the full moon this month. Oh gosh, totally. Uh, yeah, being such an amplifier, the full moon and just, yeah, Uranus. Yeah. And we have two T-squares like the sun moon with Uranus is one. And the other T-square is Saturn, Venus, and Jupiter. 
Mm. Both happening at the time of the the full moon. So it's going to be a big full moon. It, this is really, I see like a, a pressure, the pressure cooker, the, the lit, the little top coming off and just like something is going to erupt at around this, this full moon, you know, but if we don't look- know anymore, <laughs> what's kidding. that? Hopefully it's not Yellowstone exploding more. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I think it's going to be more on a world front that we're going to yeah. see. But if if we're looking at the energies of the new moon, we actually see some really incredible opportunities. You know, so I feel like regardless of what's happening in the world, we are being given opportunities. Like we said in the beginning, find your passion, find your creativity. What is the next step you need to take? Be real with yourself. Start taking control of your life taking responsibility for your life and your health as well, because without health, we, we can't do anything. Um, so these are the big questions that we are being faced with in this new moon. And if we follow, if we follow our heart's voice, not the news or the TV, I don't even turn on the TV because it's so, it's just so full of Ugh. programming and like, God knows what I, every time I turn on the TV, even if it's just for like 30 seconds or I pass by a TV, I'm just like, oh my gosh, it's crazy. Oh, no. So this is about really quieting the voices out there and finding your voice and your truth during this time. Oh, well, for sure. Just wanted to add one thing too, is just, you know, even the transgender man, you know, be, uh, hitting the, you know, woman, another, you know, shocking thing. And then Uranus and Taurus, something about maybe the financial system and also uh, being a square, maybe something with the 5G or like frequency, like there might be some event connected to that, but hopefully yeah. not. Yeah. It's going to be a pretty big full moon. This, And I this really think it harnesses people's self-worth to being in Taurus. Like people are redefining mm -hmm. um, what abundance means and what worth means. And that the old paradigm of this is what it means to be successful. This is what it means to, be, you know, it's, yeah, I think they've leveraged it to 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 move people towards the unusual, like it's a huge breakthrough to accept maybe what used to be a minority. And it's not saying don't accept it, but why is it being so pushed and indoctrinated upon our children? Exactly. You know, so it's just the leveraging of these energies to create a more psyops or engineered version. If we can become that override frequency and 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 pay attention to that, I think you know we will be the higher technology to offset the potential of that coming in. I fully agree. And and the whole purpose of the Jupiter Saturn squares that will be ha happening for the next nine months or so, it is giving us that window to ask those big questions, you know, and to really start to stand up to these aspects of the matrix and of the rules that don't work anymore. You know, it's just even this, this question of gender, I've been seeing this come up so much in this last month. Um, and, and it's so, it's so true. Like with Pluto and Aquarius, it's a whole new paradigm. You know, we don't have, is it, was it you said that we were talking about it some time ago? There aren't, they're finding out now there aren't just two genders. There is a multiple array of genders that we're starting to, to find out now. Um, yeah. and so these are all the different things of, of society that are, it's just like radical and shocking, but we are pushing through. We are bringing in with this Saturn Jupiter square. We're asking the big questions. This is where people rebel. People say, no, this is not working. Why? <laughs> and we need to have this phase so we can usher in the, the Pluto and Aquarius era. I just hope people don't get shuffled into the false movements. And I mean, I want to say I identify as an eagle and go to my tree house and not pay my tax. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. We are what we Seth. want to be, right? What have you been noticing about all this, Seth? Well, and sorry, I didn't quite catch what you just said. I was just making a joke about you being an eagle, identifying as an eagle. It used to be a hawk. I remember that. So. <laughs> we can oh, mix it up a little. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, isn't it just so obvious in the sense that look at our world, look at the way we live. You know, I was at a park the other day. And there's a little kid who had like a brown paper bag and he just like threw it down on the ground. And these people from Massachusetts in the car are like, pick that up, that's litter. Mm -hmm. And I was like, it's a brown paper bag. And they're like, still, it's it's litter, you shouldn't do it. I'm like, okay, so what about the roads? What about the houses? What about the cars? 
isn't that litter? We just paved the whole world, just like buildings, cities, that's litter. And yet, let's see, can we go out and live off the land in harmony? And instead of watching the news, this miracle of life, this life force that every single one of us is, the most important thing there is, yeah, the news is more important than being alive and coming to terms with this miraculous force of energy that is so far beyond intelligent, but it's not prioritized. But anyway, I said that to those people. I wasn't trying to be, you know, mean or anything, but I just, it's like, what about all this infrastructure? And they just didn't know what to say. And it's hard to know what to say, right? But it's obvious that this doesn't work. It hasn't worked. And it's only made to get to a point. It's like, if you're stressed out, right? You have a bunch of anxiety, but you don't you try to bypass it. You just ignore it. You don't feel it. You keep doing that over and over. And at some point, you just explode all of it. And then the mess you have to take care of at that point is big. So it's like we have the ability to get in tune with the real news, life force, the heartbeat. This is the news. This is what is more important than any of that other stuff and what's it going to take to get i don't know half a percent of the world's population focusing on their heartbeat i mean at what point do we get enough people doing this together to get back into harmony with reality which is what you guys are talking about all these celestial objects in the sky everywhere they have an effect on us but still most people, well, I'd rather be affected by the news or belief systems. And at what point, at what point do we snap and get back in tune with what's really going on? Sorry, I had to just. That's, yeah, yeah. That's great. I make your words my own. <laughs> <laughs> and I think that's really just sums up what Raquel and I are saying about the astrology. Um, paying attention to what's going on internally is going to be a nice and welcome break. Wow. But you know, when people don't really know it's Mercury retrograde, they tend to get frustrated like, "Oh, Mercury retrograde. Oh, I can't do this. I can't do that." Well, yo, look at where it's taking you. It's a time of going inward. You know, if your m emails or just the communication realm doesn't seem to be, you know, flowing, it's because everything's wanting to go inward right now. We don't want to battle these things. We want to embrace them because like you're saying, Seth, this is the news and understanding this to to understand ourselves and how linked we are to the greater cosmic intelligence that is repairing itself and knowing to heal knowing to create uh balance and shift and change um we we are parts of that and everything in the system is seeking to not engage us in that process what are your thoughts i mean right okay so obvious and right like it's almost like you'd think it'd be common sense but why is it not I know so many intelligent people who are so aware and yet they care more about this stuff than their own heartbeat. What do you say? You know, what do you do? So I just think, okay, well, everybody makes their own choices. They do it in their own time, but look at what the cost of it is. How many species of animals need to go extinct? Why do people think they need all these things that just turn into a consumer nightmare that all the politicians of the world are shareholders on the business corporations of all this consumer garbage, like common sense, wake up, get back in tune with life. And then the more of us that do that together, that's a revolution. It's an evolution. It's getting back in tune with each other, with life, prioritizing health and wellness and love and care and not the news, not all these weird belief systems that are really like this big. Like just compared to all the planets you guys are talking about, like really everybody's focusing on one little tiny thing happening here and it's a trend. Sorry. Yeah, and that's the purpose of the the Saturn Jupiter square is really to help break down this old paradigm that I think yeah. we're all we're so aware that it's not working. And this is where we need to allow the big questions to come in. We need to give voice to our boundaries, you know, especially with, with the system, with where we're no longer 
longer willing to compromise. I think this is very important. That's what this this Saturn Jupiter square is that beginning stage of the system crumbling down, you know, and, and this is where we need to also take action where it matters. What are the things that we are ready to say no to? And what are the things that we are ready to say yes to? So, uh, you know, just allowing things to play out in the world, it's going to get pretty loud. It's, it's just the, the 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 big boys or should i say the little boys <laughs> we, right it's just like so childish they're playing out their yeah. little games yeah. it is so beyond pathetic at this point that is just like really really like it it, it it can't keep going very far people are just more and more waking up so at some point you know people need to start speaking up and saying no to the system so we will see the big boys, or should I say the little boys, playing out their karma and getting all wrapped up in their silly little games. And while they do, we just keep focusing on ourselves. We keep focusing on our passion because guess what's going to happen? They're going to do their thing and they're just going to tire themselves out and going to be running down in circles and the clock is ticking. You know, their days are numbered. Oh, so yeah. we might as well focus our energy where it matters and focus on ourselves and, and on our growth, because by doing that, we are paving the way for our future instead of waiting for them to do it for us. Totally. Yeah. And it seems like running around in circles to create a trigger and a shock and the constant engagement, it doesn't even matter in what form, you know, and it's going to be to the extremes. Uh, and it's wild. It's like absolutely what you just said. And I just had to say, it's sort of funny, but it's not funny. Um, around the time that people were getting the, you know, what, and concerts were, uh, even, you know, punk rock bands and anti-establishment band, you know, just every type that you would think would stand up against authority or the establishment mm -hmm. was going along with it. And, and, and you couldn't enter the concert venue without it. And you got like these kids that are like punk rocker and they're like, yeah, well I got, yeah. And I could go, you know, and, and like, let's see the years previous to that, they're sliding around in porta potty crap, you know, <laughs> like it rains and, and they're like, you know, doing like these freak shows and doing things that are like literally going to kill them. And then boom, all of a sudden, you know, the way that the system can have even control over people that are reckless and wild and rebellious that are putting their life and their health at risk. All of a sudden it's like, I just had to say, like, it's amazing to me to, to watch that. That's I'm sure everybody else can agree, but yeah. <laughs> I just found that like we were talking about that at the last event just I know it's disturbing and nothing to really laugh at but it's just kind of like when you put things in perspective how much fear can be amplified but how much that might not even be a factor um when it's not like in your face like this it really shows you know what form of a dependency bond you actually have with this false authority and uh, and it's hooked a lot of people in and um and, and it becomes a part of the nervous system reaction too, because, you know, people have implants, people are linked in, in ways that they don't quite understand. And they don't know why it's hard to break free of it because, you know, there's alien machinery that plays a part in this, that most people can't really look at. So, and that can be broken down, but it's very hard for people. And I think that's also where this Chiron square is going to get amplified when Saturn and Chiron are conjunct, forming a difficult aspect with Pluto. That'll be like the final breaking point um, you know, can, can souls bridge into this new shift or hold on to the old one for dear life at the cost of even their own lives. It's, oh, I haven't even gotten that far yet. So... Oh, I just steered ahead. I, 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 I was like, I was like, <laughs> you got my curiosity <laughs> peaked now. Oh my God. I, uh... I, I came across it. I was just progressing a chart and I'm like, wait a minute. So is Saturn going to conjunct Chiron and form a square to Pluto? wow, that's going to be really intense. And I see the way it impacts, you know, I, I, I really just stumbled upon it. And so I think it's 2028 and I know that's way far ahead, but yeah, I, I really yeah. feel like with, with everything that you're saying about, you know, the breaking point and, and it's like, you, people really want to do this sooner rather than later. Cause uh, the more entangled you get, Ouch. the harder it is to unwind. Right. And it's just yeah. going to get even more yeah. intense that, um, you know, how, how much of a detriment is it going to be to unwind from if people still continue with this relationship with the inverted dependency bond system that they have. And, and I just liken it to, 
you know, if you don't get away from an abusive partner when 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 the abuse starts to begin and, and you keep making excuses for it and you ignore it or you just say, oh, I'm OK, I bounce back. And that really was nothing. And and you literally are, get so desensitized to passive aggressive abuse or any kind of like real abuse or are in denial of it. Um, I, I feel like it's just going to get really worse for people if they don't move away from it sooner rather than later i guess especially during this full moon with the t squared to uranus like this is the pressure cooker just waiting to pop mm. and anything that you've been running away from or in denial about or not speaking up that you know you need to it's it, there is a big chance that it, it might erupt at this time so um, like I said, we've been given the last two months have been about that, have been given, giving us the opportunity to face the truth, face the the new reality that we are ready for. And that does involve perhaps some difficult conversations or some even rather difficult realizations with ourselves. Um, so we've been given this time to come to terms with it, to take steps, to have the conversations um, so if there's anything that you've been running away from, you know, things might get a little, um, a little, a little loud and, uh, um, how do you say, like, like uh, electrified with Uranus there. Mm. So I, I really, I really do recommend, you know, everybody to search within themselves and just like, make sure you're doing your part. You don't need to worry about other people. You know, there's going to be dynamics with other people as well, but you don't need to get involved with their process. You know, focus on you, make sure that you are taking the steps that you need to. Um, and when this full moon comes, there might be, like I said, there might be some twists and turns to the stories out there. Um, there may also be some, some radical and shocking things happen in the world. Uh, and with different uh even technology perhaps um in the government as well so it's going to be an interesting full moon that we're going to we're going to have here um, sounds like it's a perfect time to be selflessly selfish yes the mercury retrograde is perfect for that <laughs> i'm so great to come together with you guys and talk about this <laughs> this really really helps to just bring this out in conversation um yeah. Any final thoughts before Seth takes us into a meditation? Yeah, I think that was it for my part. That's covered it. I'm going to shove this one light. I'll be right back. Okay. Oh my gosh. Wild times. And I think, you know, with moving into the higher earth energies and which really means higher aspects of ourselves, our capacity to do things that were deemed impossible or you can't do that or, you know, all the restrictions of old Saturn are, are dissolving away. And I think those are the gatekeeper moments in our lives where if our intuition tells us we can, we're not going to buy into something telling us we can't. And, and that is a test for ourselves to achieve self-mastery, which the higher octave of Saturn represents. And uh, just, yeah, everything you're, you know, th that we're bringing in and that you've you know talked about with the month ahead, I think is going to be a really good opportunity to get on board with that. So that's my final thoughts. Mm -hmm. I agree. Let's go with it. I used to be kind of a hypochondriac, but I realized I'm either going to be a hypochondriac or I'm going to be a healer. I have a choice here. Like this doesn't feel natural. This constant worrying, right? Where my Virgo energies are um, <laughs> just like, oh my God, what is that? And then Googling, I'm like, oh my gosh, it might be a flesh eating virus. You know, it's just like a mosquito bite. Right. And uh, <laughs> anyway, you don't have to go there, but, oh my but I, that was a long time ago. I'm not that person anymore. Well, but, you know, the seriousness and chaos of reality that has become so normal, it throws anybody off balance. And it's hard to tell what is real and what isn't. And so any little word or trigger or anything, it just turns into this like cascade of intensity. And, you know, we can relax. We can be at peace with the way things are. We can know that all these celestial bodies we're talking about are influencing everything and we can be in coherence with that. It's simple, right? We just got to make the new habit, focus on life, life force. Mm -hmm. So you're going to guide reality. us into a meditation? Yes, let's do it. Perfect timing. 
So we're going to go into a short little meditation. So wherever you are, if you're going to do that with us, just totally relax. Close your eyes. Slow your breathing down so it's gentle. A little rhythmic. Even inhales, even exhales slower. And make an attempt to completely relax your nervous system. You don't have to think about what that means. You just send a signal to chill out. Our bodies are filled with electricity, literal bioelectricity. And it is so powerful. And it is also something that when we are not in touch with it, we create our own circuits or wiring in the way that whatever influences us the most, we create new circuitry in our being so that it's easier to focus on what we usually do. No matter if that's pain, like Laura said, being in hypochondria, or being afraid of all the things happening because they are scary. But what is on the other side of that fear. What is on the other side of all the chaos that we witness everywhere? What is on the other side of that is reality. The physical universe is in a state of coherence with itself. And that coherence is the predominant force. And yes, it has little areas where there's chaos. Like the star explodes. But then the coherence of the celestial bodies and of space, they catch that explosion. They process it. It just happens naturally. So there's a little bit of chaos, blows up, but then the greater coherence force of reality, of our realities. These bodies are made up of the exact same elements. The same, our inner nature is completely attuned to the natural world. So when we're totally relaxed, we rest the energy field that is in us, the bioelectricity, starts to be humbling. Because when you quiet yourself down, when you slow your senses down, your breathing, it starts to become very humbling because you become aware that there is this beyond genius, intelligent life force that knows how to run these bodies, whether we're sleeping or awake. And when we choose to start attuning ourselves to this energy, this life force, then its essential nature starts to influence us. And the side effects of that are healing, learning to trust in the process of life, no matter how chaotic or painful it's been. When you choose to get in tune with what is really happening, the real news, this force of energy causing the heart to beat. When you get in tune with that inside of yourself, 
then that predominant force of the coherence that keeps heavenly celestial bodies all working in movement, in harmony with each other. And they express all kinds of different levels of support. And even the way they relate to each other is fascinating because it's all done within these greater cosmic laws that everything is anyway. No matter who is the president of this country or any other has no effect on nature, reality. Yeah, our species is making a mess here. But again, our inner nature can be so in tune with mother nature so that all of that coherence starts to express itself through us because we already are it. And so we're choosing to get in touch with our own inner nature. And then we start finding out how supported we are by nature. And so with all of this that we just shared, put an inner smile in your face or a big smile. You can put a big smile on. We always tell people this is so important because no matter how stressed out or how much pain you're in or all the different things that we all experience regularly every day, when you put that smile on your face, you're flicking the switch of changing your body chemistry instantly. So you can be sad and pain going through whatever, but you put that smile on your face and instantly your body chemistry becomes affected by it. And so when you relax your body, you relax your nervous system, you start to slow your breathing down because the breathing's happening anyway. We're just not aware of it until we choose to be. And with those steps and those elements in place, when we put that inner smile in our face or on our face, then we begin to feel what is true reality. What is the most important relationship of anybody's life if you look at it objectively. You know, it's easy to forget how hard it was to get to this point, to be conceived, to form out of a little embryonic salamander-like creature that we were like all of us, and then to develop and to have pure consciousness without any influence from language or belief systems. We all come from that. We all are that. But then the world teaches us all kinds of other stuff. But guess what? That purity is always there. And it is cause for celebration because when we love our life, our life force loves us back and it gets us healthy and in tune. And then we begin to role model what it's like to be so in tune with all of this that even if people don't recognize what it is at first, they feel it and they start to seek it out. So if enough of us do this personally and then come together and do it collectively, 
we truly can transform human consciousness because everything is a miracle. People are like, well, it's going to take a miracle if our species is ever going to change. Guess what? It already is a miracle. So the more of us who choose to attune to that together, that's us living the reality. So before you open your eyes, just see if you can memorize the feeling of what it's like to get your body calm and your spirits up just by choosing to do that. And if there's a part of that process that you feel, that you enjoy, memorize it because that becomes the foundation that you continue to build the part of who you know you've always had the potential to be but that not until now were you ready for it because it's happening for so many right now it's amazing to watch so let's be a part of that together and let's celebrate every breath we take because you never know when it could be your last right out of nowhere. So it's time to get humble, to get in sync with life. And you know where to find us. This is what we do. So Raquel, Laura, thank you guys so much. I love these conversations that we have. It's so fun. Aw, thank you. Thank you. I thoroughly enjoy them too. Yes, thanks. Please for share. Oops, yeah. sorry, Laura. Go ahead. Oh, yeah. No, thanks for the beautiful meditation. So, yeah, share this. If it was helpful, tag, like, love, get the word out there. This is, we do this every month, once a month. Mm -hmm. And the idea is to get, as many people doing this, even in their own way. Let's inspire change because we are change. We are that miracle. Hmm. Well, it's great to be with both of you. Thank you so yeah. much. Thank and you. thanks everybody for tuning in. We'll see you next time. See you next time. Bye, Thank everybody. You. Thank Bye. you guys. Bye. Bye.